right, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Marcy, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Marcy. <clears throat> Adoption of agenda. Any changes? No changes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the agenda for June the 11th be passed and adopted as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Call to the public. I have no... There's one right here, call. Mr. Chairman. I forgot to give it to the clerk. I'm sorry. Robert Fontes. Yeah, I put down in the few things I wanted to talk about, basically the high school. I've been at the high school for 32 years and two years in Tempe, worked under different administrators, different principals, and I tend to keep my mouth shut. And I'm glad you gave me an opportunity to talk about some things that I feel are not correct. My father used to say, uh, Robert, don't go to a meeting where everybody's always yelling back and forth, like City Hall, because then everybody talks and nobody listens. He was a wise man, my father. Okay. Anyway, what I do now, I do it individually, even though I've heard complaints from many of my fellow teachers. And it's something I don't like. I think it's negative. <coughs> negative at all. And this has to do with the topic about contracts, retired personnel, and the effects it has on the faculty. It's not good. I personally think it's not good. Okay. Sure, before the year ended, I got my contract too. And email, which is Okay, it's okay, but I'm not the end of that. Usually we used to be handed and well documented and so on. But uh, I saw the amount and I go, that's no gallows for you, you know. I think negative and I didn't think that much about it. But then I saw my fellow teachers, veterans and the ones that are ready to retire, and they were up in arms, complaining, this and that, nobody told us anything, we don't know anything at all. Somebody said, well, there was a meeting. I said, the last week, I teach. I got IP classes, I got a lot of paperwork to do. That's the wrong time to have a meeting to discuss this problem. Okay. So I thought about it, because that's one thing I've always done. Look at the situation and think about it. Think about what's going on and how it happened. I talked to a lot of people, friends that I had at work at Desert View, ex-superintendents, ex-principals, my friends from Phoenix, and I got different information, and also from Audrey Garcia, and she knows her information, she didn't come in today, but she knows her information on that one. I don't understand, personally, and a lot of the teachers told me the same thing, why we weren't gotten together at least a week or two before and told this is going to happen. That I respect. You know how shocking it is to get a contract that all of a sudden 4,000, 5,000 is gone. Okay, is that what the law says? That's what you're supposed to do? Fine. But research shows and people are telling me that some other districts are doing different things and trying to help these teachers one way or another. That attitude permeates around the campus and some teachers, the students even, are affected by it. One of them will ask me, well, we're losing our IB teacher. Excellent person. Not really retired, but they feel that she left because of the situation. 
wonderful IB teacher. She did marvelous. And we're losing her to Choya. That bugs me. It bugs me a lot. Okay. I mean, and then all these teachers went to see our administration. I don't know if the administration came here. Yes, Ms. Bonillas is here. From what I understand, talking to our administration, what happened, and our administration was saying, we don't know. They're the ones that get blamed for it. We have a sharp administration. We have a young administration. And I think they're the future. I'm not, because I'm pretty set to go in a couple of years or so. Why did they not know? I don't understand. Is that a, not a way to operate a business? I wouldn't. But I guess I'm not, I'm not the boss anyway. That did bother me. Okay. It makes them look bad. It cuts their authority at their knees. They need to know what's going on. Okay. There is a, a negative attitude. I've seen it for the last few years about these retired teachers. I'm one of them. Okay. I'm not asking for a lot of money. I just like to work with the kids in Nogales. They're special. They're unique. I go from the IB to the lower, my lower groups. I guess you would call them ESL, LEP, whatever they call them today. And I love working with them. Kids and our gals are different. Okay. And I've always gotten the impression that we try to get rid of teachers that are going to retire. And we only stick to math and science, which nobody can find, even in Phoenix and Tucson and so on. But we have teachers that I think do marvelous work. They were my mentors. And I would like to keep them. That's not my decision. Mr. Morales' wife, when I was young, and I did student council and everything else in the world, she would tell me about what to do with the kids. You have 60 kids in a classroom. I'll help you. There's nothing like mentors. Ms. Garcia. Wonderful mentor. Uh, Mrs. Scott, my God, there's nothing I couldn't ask her. And she would have mentored me well. I have nephews that have told me that they did wonderful in the university as far as writing because of Ms. Scott. Okay. I did call Myra and Ms. Soto, and they did a beautiful job in trying to help me out. Not that I understood everything, but at least they tried to explain they were decent about it. And at least they apologized, which I got from nobody else. I would have thought that at least somebody would apologize from the main administration saying, we're sorry we made a mixed up. Now let's get together and talk about it. Not the last day Friday when I don't even see my email and there's only three or four people. <coughs> we have a lot of young talent. It's coming in. But I've always felt that the young talent needs time. I have the fellow teacher that I work with, and I'm not ashamed to say his name, Mr. Burnell. He came five years ago. The first year he had it rough. Now Mr. Burnell, I worked with him, we worked hard. It's wonderful in the IB program. Our senior students are being trained to do work for college in the IB. And he sees what's going on and he sort of goes, well, maybe it's time for me, if you're gone, to look somewhere else. We should be working hard at keeping people that are experienced and have the knowledge and just not say, well, he's double dipping that we got to get rid of it. That's the impression I get sometimes, I'm sorry. That's the impression I get sometimes. When I applied for the job, and I talked to Mr. Valenzuela, and I believe he talked to Mr. Parra, if I'm not mistaken, I told him, okay, I'm retiring, I'll look into Tucson for something. He said, no, Robert, we want you. Your experience. You can deal with the lower level kids and the higher level kids. <coughs> and I said, thank you. Thank you very much, I said. 
But if I'm not doing the job, let me know. Okay. That's all I expect. I mean, of course, why we do that is beyond me. My wife, but she can't work anymore, her back is hurt, worked at Dead's Review. And they go 100%, some other schools too that I like to, to hire better teachers back. Because if you hire a new teacher, you need, well, some of your businessmen know that you need uh, uh, two or three years before those persons are really into your system and know what's going on. The same thing in new teachers. They can be very talented, but they don't know our community. They don't know our culture. And sometimes it takes a while to relate. And my wife did the AP for Desert View. They called her back saying, we need you. You did the program. You did this. Go ahead and retire. We'll bring you back. I don't know. It sure seems like we're so negative about it. There's a lot of excellent people. We have young teachers. No, well, not young. I got friends that work in the same social di study department that I do. And I'm not afraid to say their name because they're excellent teachers. Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Heathman. They're planning to retire in a couple of years. And our district doesn't want them back. So they'll go about somewhere else. To be, it breaks my heart because that's a lot of talent, a lot of expertise. And just putting in a brand new people to take over Mr. Heathman class is a major problem, I think. Remember, most of these are my opinions. I've just heard from other teachers. But that's what I think. And I felt that I need to come in and express myself. And at least you're giving me that opportunity. Somehow I feel also that uh, just because we retired and I got 66% of my salary and whatever it is now, that I'm making a lot of money. Boy, these people make money left and right. We need to do something. They can balance the budget for us. It doesn't seem like it. It's not that much more. Finally, after 34 years, me and my wife can go out to dinner and buy what we have to do and pay for our son's college. I don't know, people, I guess some people think we're draining the system. And I talked to an ex-superintendent who told me it's not the teacher himself. And somebody that I knew from the state said, it's the people high in the hierarchy that earn 150000 in Phoenix and they retire, they get 80%. And we get 66%. And then they come back as a, 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 what do they call them? They come back as counselors, advisors, and something. But no, let's blame the teacher. Okay. We have security people. We have guards that uh, only Paul, work 20. Can I ask you to wrap this up? I, I think we're getting your point. Yes, but uh, if you don't want to listen to the rest, fine. Let me know. Tell me to sit down. You're the boss. I'm asking you to. to I think we under we we, we see what you Okay, you're I'll make it quick and short. And, 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 this and is a point. Wrap it up, please. This is a point. I'll make it quick and short, Doctor, to make you aware. Maybe once in a while I should come to Nogales High School and talk to your teachers to see what have you ever done it, sir? On occasion. That helps a lot, doesn't it? Anyway, we must keep communication. Superintendent, you went to a meeting where I was there and I asked the question, I'm sorry to bring this up. I asked the meeting and I said, all I'm concerned about, and that was about four weeks ago, when you talked about lack of money and so, I understand. But I asked you, I always hear things about in the summer, everybody else in the districts gets more money, more this, more that. You said this year, everybody gets the same across the board. It'll be transparent, and you will know about it. <coughs> well, I didn't know about it, and it was not transparent. All I'm asking you is I hope it gets better. 
I feel bad for our situation. I feel bad for our retirement teachers. And maybe you're right. Maybe I should stop talking. <coughs> I don't want to have a, it's not, I'm not here to fight. I'm just telling you what I feel and what the teachers at Nogales High School feel. They're let down, they're not supported, and that to me, it's a shame. Hopefully it'll get better, but that's your decision. And I thank you very much, because now I can go home. Let me, let me make it, I'd like to make a comment. I know this is not a discussion item, but I think there are some things that you are in error in what you are saying. I would like to be able to have some time with you. We did get an opportunity to speak with some, some other individuals, but uh, everybody did get 2% across the board, including you. I it's just, any. it's okay, but I think when you're making a comment that is supposed to be transparent and across the board, everybody did get that 2% across the board. Just that there are some, some issues that came up in terms of the alternative contribution rate, which I think is what okay. your issue is. And I think it would be good for you and I to sit down and talk. We did have a, a meeting. It was very late. I and, know, and, really. and I think that we've done a very good job as an administration in terms of looping out to individuals. In this case, I did send a, uh, an email to the board that we, uh, we failed to do that. Right. We did. Um, it usually is certainly not in my style not to include people, especially when it affects their money. So we tried to make that right by having three separate uh, meetings. Uh, apparently, you couldn't have made uh, that meeting, but but still, we could have done it a little earlier on. We did have discussions about it, and 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 all of my meetings, whether they're administrative leadership or the governing board, and we talked about the alternative contribution rate. But nevertheless, uh, maybe that information didn't get out to everybody. I apologize for that. But to make things right, I'd be happy to sit down with you. And, you and talk about it. Mr. Do uh, Mr. Simon, you should have sat down with everybody who was affected. Because you the hear people. all the stories. And uh, you, maybe up here it's hunky-dory, but over there it's not. Uh -huh. And uh, I've always personally thought I would ask our administrators. Uh, they don't even have the power to... I've asked them, why don't you hire this person? He's going to retire. We need him back. We don't have the authority of this. I, I think there are some things that you are in error in terms of your comments, and I'd like to set those straight with you. Well, I thought you said that only science and, and math teachers could be hired. I think you and I need to sit down Mr. and Sibbert, have a chat. I think okay. you two ne do need, after the meeting, yes. if you're still here, otherwise get in contact with each other. Well, personally, I would like to get together with all the people that were involved. That would be fine. I'm just bringing their information. That would be fine with okay. me too. More the merrier, because I think that there are some things that you uh, you may not understand, or you by the evident by the comments that you have made, there are some things that you are in error. I don't want to get into statistics. I leave uh, that to Audrey I'm Garcia, I understand. and she can I, talk to you about that. Uh, I just want to see the general picture of Nogales High School. Okay. That's all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fontes. Anybody else care to address the board? Okay, we'll move on to the next uh, item. Item two, governing board updates. Uh, Hector? Uh, no, no report other than to publicly offer my condolences to my wonderful colleague for so many years, Mr. Morales, and the passing of his uh, lovely wife, Nancy. Sorry, Frank, and uh, God bless you and help you. Thank you. Thank you. No report. Marcy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to echo, I have some comments here, but just to echo uh, Mr. Arana's comment on the passing of uh, Nancy Morales, who was a wonderful educator at uh, Wade Carpenter Middle School, worked there for numerous years, especially as student council advisor. I would just like to request the chairman for a brief moment of silence in her memory. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, that uh, Greta Solinap uh, for that Harvard University students that were down here for, at, for a couple of weeks. 
I mean, a, a week, seven days they were down here. It was a wonderful activity. I got to see some of the, the sessions there that I sat in there. And let me tell you, those, those students uh, came down there and were able to get in there and capture a lot of learning experience for our students here. They really enjoyed it. And what I liked, there were students from outside of Nogales Unified <coughs> School District. And it was just a wonderful experience. Nothing but a positive environment there. It was nice that Ms. Solanop could put that together. I, she's going to be going to medical school next year, but I even understand that the word got up to uh, Tucson Unified School District, and they asked her to put something on like that for their students over there. But what a wonderful experience. And let me tell you, just being students, and they were able to capture all of the teaching and learning techniques with those students. It was just really gratifying to see the good things that happened there. Also want to congratulate Lincoln and Bracker School. I attended their fifth grade transition. Thank both principals for their emphasis on academic achievement. It was very well done. And Superintendent Zimmerman and Mrs. Unica, uh, congratulations to you for that retirement dinner. It's the best retirement dinner I have ever attended. It was very positive, very uplifting, and um, everything worked out very well. And I thought that those, retire those retired teachers felt along with their families, felt very good about the gratitude from the district itself, and I thought you both did a wonderful job putting that together. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. I have no comments. Uh, moving on, Superintendent's report, Steve. Yeah, it's just a, um, a couple a couple things. <laughs> Item A says there's a jump, jump start to school event. That's going to be on July 21st at NHS in the uh, gymnasium. Um, there has been a lot of organizations, a lot of people that have been involved in this. But what this is, is an event uh, that's going to take place from 7 in the morning to about 2 in the afternoon uh, where uh, there will be services such as uh, optical, dental, giving out uniforms, haircuts. All of those things are going to take place during that date. And what we've been able to do is is we have a lot of people who are donating time, donating resources, and the hardest part is always trying to figure out with those resources what can we handle in terms of the, the outreach. And, and what we've decided to do, we've identified uh, K-5, about 841 students who we think that could benefit from such an event. They will receive something like this. I'm going to pass it down. It's a golden ticket. And uh, I don't really want to go into a lot of detail how we're making the selection, uh, but I'll tell you to, to, to some degree it is based on need. Uh, we have uh, close to 6,000 students. We certainly can't extend that to, to all of them, but, but we believe that the selection, we have a committee of about 20, 25 people. We have a meeting tomorrow to talk about uh, some of the things that still need to be done. So it, it's a good thing. and. Uh, um, uh, when this event is done, we'll give a report to the board in terms of how it went uh, and give a, give a recognition to all the people that were involved in this because it's amazing. Whether they're political figures in the community, whether they're just people who just want to give, uh, but there's been a lot of organization uh, and, and I've, I've been very impressed with the, um, the amount of the willingness, I guess, to, to pull off such an event. The second item is... Uh, Can I make a comment, Sure, Mr. sure. I just want to congratulate you, Superintendent Simon. That's fine leadership that you're helping the kids to get that jump start back into the district and everything, because there's a lot of parents who need help, and nothing but compliments. I think that's a great event that you're putting uh, uh, on. People have been just fantastic. Wait till you, you see. We'll give you a little better report after, after the event. But if you could put it on your calendar from 7 o'clock to, to 2 o'clock, if you could poke your head in that, but that would be great. It's, uh, uh, I, I think you will be impressed. Item B, we need to set a special board meeting to adopt the proposed budget. As you know, we have 10 days before the, the actual adoption date. We are looking at June 28th. You know, once it comes, it becomes summertime, it's really, it's really hard to get everybody together. Uh, but the one who I really need to, to make sure 
that they're there is Carla. <laughs> and June 28th, and, and that time works best. Uh, I don't know what your schedules are, but we are, uh, it's going to be probably a one item agenda, a, a quick presentation, and then it'll be over. And then um, we won't have another board meeting until I think, what is it, the 9th? The, the 9th of July. So um, we are hoping that you can look that into your calendar. I'll have um, Mary reach out to you to, to confirm that that tomorrow. What time is that at? It's going to be at 530. 30, Usually works thing. best for, for everyone. Next one, I, I, I'm not knowing your schedules. It's, it's difficult, but this was, a, was an item that, that was discussed at the last board meeting. However, it was going to make the agenda anyway because we do need to do our goal setting. I'd like to do that um, at least before school starts. Um, we have an idea, at least from an administration, what those goals would look like. But but I like to work it the other way around. I like to see the board's interests and their goals. Uh, one thing I do know is that the this governing board has had a strong interest in student achievement, which is which it should be, and then. Um, uh, once we set those goals, we'll, we'll work as an administrative team and trickle those down to their goals that are at the school sites. So um, if there's any particular week, uh, I think maybe, the, I, don't, I really don't know how to handle this issue. Maybe I could have Mary give you a call and try to get some common dates that are available and, and try to work that out. That, that would be fine with you. So if you have your calendars, Mary, we'll, we'll give you a call within the next couple of days to do that. And then item D, E, usually perfunctory, you have your summary budget report and your student activities, auxiliary operation funds, and extra uh, curricular tax credit info. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> item five, information and discussion items. A, investing in innovation funds. Both items under Roman numeral five, investing in the, the innovative funds in fruit and vegetables are both uh, items that are, uh, one was a request to be uh, as a future agenda item. And what Kathy Scott will be taking both of those items. Good evening, board president, members, Mr. Zimmerman, audience. I'm really excited to talk about two or three things with grants and a little disappointed with one so let's take this one at a time if you have your investing in innovation funds I had been hired about a week and a half last February and I was flipping through and it was either 60 minutes or 48 hours one of those and I saw a feature story on this innovation grant I got so excited I went the next day looked it up then and we really didn't meet the requirements and so this year I put in a lot more time and a lot more investigation and we still don't meet the requirements even though this would be a wonderful opportunity. Let me explain what this does. It partners a school up with a private foundation or a private company that is really STEM oriented. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And what it does is it doesn't just hand you money, which is 15% of your grant, and the grants run a million to a million five a year for five years. That would have been wonderful to receive. So your company needs to be able to give you 150,000. But more than that, they release some of their employees to come down and teach classes. They have your students go over there and work internships. Um, it really is a partnership. Well, I, I look around and I see that we have a new salad store and, you know, a new owner for our Dairy Queen and different things. But who in our community could hand us a check for 150000 a year for five years in a row? And on top of that, provide the mentorship, the internship, the release of their employees to come over and teach, literally teach our classes. Okay, so I looked and looked and it doesn't look like that's gonna work for us. Um, I thought about maybe contacting Raytheon or something in Tucson, but I found out that we would have to send our students there a minimum of three times a week. Well, you can imagine what the transportation cost would be three times a week, plus they might miss as much as a half day of school. 
it just didn't seem to be worth our going after. And then I found out two other things. The only schools being awarded these grants are already exceptional schools. It used to be you got grants if you were kind of struggling to help you come up. And the new philosophy is the best performing schools get the most money so that they can continue their best practices and serve as a role model. So we would have to find a private engineering technology type of company that would be willing to write us a check for 150000 plus provide mentorships to our students. Now another thing that you may not be aware of in federal spending, let alone grants, is something called sequestration. And Hector, I always thought that was related to juries when you didn't want the jury to be out and, you know, reading newspapers and stuff. So the government, like it does everything, kind of stole the, t the title. But it has nothing to do with that. A law was passed that the federal budget must be balanced by December 31st. And if it is not, they have to cut funding from everything except defense, Medicare, and Social Security or all our federal grants fall under that sequestration. Come January 1st, we are set to lose 7 to 10% of all our funding if indeed Congress does not get it together and repeal this. I went on just before this board meeting and read on that, the likelihood of our Congress getting together and agreeing on anything, let alone budgets, is pretty slim. So. Do we want to get any new grants where we hire people, we set up programs, we arrange student schedules, Ms. Bonias, we alter the school day, and then come January 1st, we have to cut it, um, let people go, let the programs go. I experienced this. One of the grants that I administered was called the Ames Intervention Dropout Prevention. We were one of four sites in the state to get exemplary status. They would bring people down to see us. And yet, we were cut the third year 50% of our funding, even though we had people hired, addendums signed, all of that. So the fact that we would have to have a technology company sponsor us, we would have to be an excelling, excelling school already and the fact that come January 1st, we're likely to lose up to 10% of our funding is why I'm not applying. However, if you as the board choose to overrule that decision, that's your right. But to apply for such a grant would cost us a great deal of money anyway for something that we're not likely to get. Okay? But knowing that, I'm still looking for grants. And just a few weeks ago, I got an email from Ms. Soto saying, had you heard about their fruits and vegetable program? And I had not. We had one day to get the grants together. Ed Banuelos from the food services company came over. We wrote the grants. We went around to all the sites. And if you look at that one, Mitchell received 26450 Challenger, 27400 Lincoln, 17,800, and Wealthy, 15,850. I believe that's 87,500 that we have for this grant that we got. Now, what does this grant do? I have the paper for you, but the audience may not know. It gives students in the elementary schools that were selected and other schools applied but it tells you how competitive this is. Even with 88% free and reduced lunch, they didn't make the cut. Okay. But there were 250 applicants, and they only chose 107 schools. We had four of those 107 statewide. We will provide students with a snack of a piece of fruit or some vegetables three, two to three times a week during the school day. Okay. Now, what would that look like? Mr. Banuelos and I did some brainstorming. We had a recent administrative seminar. We, we gave them some samples. It might be those fruit apple slices in a little cellophane bag. Have you ever seen those? It may be some carrot sticks. Uh, we're trying to, they encourage us to offer something the kids may never have had. 
I went to Walmart with Ms. Soto looking for fruits and vegetables for our demonstration, and I saw something called a kumquat, which I'm not familiar with, but I thought, well, that'd be interesting. You know, let them try, try some things that they may not have tried. Um, we have a training on June 29th. A representative from each of the schools that received the funding will we, uh, be at that meeting. I'll be there. Ed will be there. A uh, person from the business office will be there. And we hope to make this a tradition. And I don't think there's anything better we can do than improve our students' nutrition and eating habits. That's such a push right now. If you look at the second page of that paper I gave you, um, from the director of the State Department of Education, congratulations on being a recipient of the USDA Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. We had almost 250 applicants and ADE was only able to fund 107. So as you can gather, the competition was fierce. And I think it's great that we can do this. Are there any questions on those two grants? Board members? Mr. Chairman? On the innovative funds, Mrs. Scott, well, mm. first of all, I think that our schools are exceptional schools. The other thing is, last year, the governor sent down her personal representative to get impact, to get feedback from community schools in Santa Cruz County on the STEM program. They mentioned this. During the discussion at that time, the director was personally here for the governor, science and STEM. She coordinates everything for this grant. And we told her that one of the downfalls <coughs> is that we would not, the rural areas would not be able to get those professionals from big corporations to come down here. They said that they were working, they were getting feedback, that they were putting their package together to submit. They did and they asked for my input uh, on it. I did glance through it, I didn't thoroughly read through it. But before we just set this innovative fund aside, I would like to see if you could get in contact with the director from the governor's office and find out, are you scratching out now all rural communities when we gave you this feedback? Because we feel that we are just as much entitled to have that kind of access to the STEM programs, especially with all the emphasis mm -hmm. on that kind of achievement, and the, what the state is looking for, what the federal government is looking for. And our students should be entitled to that kind of expertise here. So I would like to just request if you could do some research with that director there. If you will send me her name, I'll be glad to. Okay. 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 But um, let me just finish. If I, okay. I think that that's important. Mm -hmm. on, Fruits and vegetable grants, uh, great. I'm a big supporter to teaching our students nutrition. The obesity in adolescence is just way out of proportion. The obesity in this country is getting way out of proportion. And I think that this is a great start to teaching our kids how to eat nutritional uh, foods, especially fruits and vegetables. And I compliment you for taking that on right away. I just would like to see a little bit more uh, emphasis on A, though, too. Okay. And just a couple of things. I did talk to some people at the State Department on this. It may not be your same lady. But if you don't have not heard, we did receive funding from Race to the Top. And the emphasis through Race to the Top must be STEM. So Angel Cantu is already setting up, bringing experts down. We aren't ignoring STEM. We're going to bring that down to our, our latest um, allocations through Title I have been for math training for all teachers. So if they're not coming to us, we're bringing them to us. Okay? If they don't come willingly, we're doing that with some of our grant funding. But I will, Mr. Verona, check that out. One thing, it is on your sheet, but the audience may not know. One of the things they want us to do is buy our fruits and vegetables locally. And if we can spend 87000 within the community, you know, spread it around, do it fairly, that, that would also be a help to the community. The last thing is in front of you, I left a Title I brochure in English and Spanish. Mr. Zimmerman pointed out the Jump Start program. Uh, we talked about what we would like to contribute. 
and we thought about giving at least one school uniform to these kids so they could start school in a crisp new uniform. I called my Title I director and asked if it was at all possible. She had to ask her director, but it filtered back down, that if we provide information at this jump start about Title I, we could spend $20,000 on uniforms. So we got the allocation. Um, Angie Rodriguez is already hard at work getting the uniform set up, and she will have at her booth, we've, we've printed these up, uh, these pamphlets to hand out. And it's also information for you. Many of you may not know exactly what Title I covers, what it doesn't allow. And I think in this very simple brochure, it'll give you the information, too, about what Title I does. Okay. Are there any questions on the grants or anything? No, sure. kudos on your latter comments. Okay. Mr. Chair, a uh, quick question on the sponsorship for the innovation funds. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we don't have one company in town that would pledge $150,000, but I could think of a scenario where five companies might pledge 30000 apiece mm -hmm. and, and offer the things that you were discussing. Is that a possibility or um, must it be one company? No, it doesn't have to be one company, but the company has to be science and technology oriented. Mm -hmm. I thought of your law office. I thought about, maybe not 30,000, because mm -hmm. we could even get 20. We could get 20 companies, and you would be willing to take two or three student mentors, that type of thing. But it's not social sciences. It has to be science and technology. Um, Mr. Verona, when I did look into this, how they suggested we go, if you look at the um, definition, mm -hmm. is something like that JTED program we talked about another time. They don't even rarely fund a site. They, if you look at that, they want you to form a partnership with other schools, other programs, and then they fund that, like if we, if we were a member of JTED, and they JTED got this grant, then we could send people through that way, Mr. Verona. But it's very rare that a single high school would get one of these $1.5 million grants. So what happened with engineering and math? Because part of Mr. Arana's business has to do with mathematics. So <laughs> you, did they eliminate? If you're going to say STEM, so what happened to engineering and math? I don't understand your question. Are you saying because Mr. Arana is an accountant, he deals with math, so he could fund this and we could teach kids how to work with math? You keep Perhaps saying, a few. You keep saying, Ms. Scott, that this ha it has to do with science and technology. Engineering and math. Oh, you didn't say that. It has. So okay. then why Mr. Arana has to do with mathematics? Why wouldn't he qualify then? I'm not saying he won't. Okay, I will look into that. Okay. okay. I doubt that he would want to allocate 150000 to us, but there may be, Mr. Arana, like you said, 10, 15 companies that would have something to do with this. Although, to be honest and fair, Mr. Verona, I don't think the type of math of accounting is the scientifically oriented math, but it may be. It may be computer organized. And so what do they call they your math, Mr. Arana? <laughs> 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 if it's not yeah. I don't know. I guess my question along those lines would be the produce industry. Yes. Uh, that's our major industry. And, I mean, the, the innovation and the scientific advancements they have in crop production and, and the, the manner in which they produce and, and um, improve their quality and quantity of produce is very scientifically oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering if somehow they could qualify. And I will look into that. I did think, I wrote a list, produce retail, you know, I wrote what we do here, okay, and um, I, I, may, I will look into that, and I know many of the produce owners, I taught most of them at this point, so I, I know them and I can have a personal contact with them, but it's, it's a heck of, an, a, heck of a, a commitment, you know, it's not just money, it's releasing your employees to come teach classes, it's, it's mentoring. But you may be willing. Mr. Arana may very much be willing to come and teach an accounting course at Nogales High School because we could sure use an expert like him. Yeah. Any other questions on any of the grants or what I prefer? Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item, item six, consent, six, consent agenda. 
approval of routine warrants, purchase orders, travel claims, employee leave and transfer requests, and employee resignations. Any matter on the consent agenda will be re removed from the consent agenda and discussed as regular agenda items upon the request of any board member. Item A, approval of May 14, 2012 budget hearing and regular board meeting minutes and May 21st, 2012 special meeting. B, ratification of expense payroll vouchers. C, ratification of student activities auxiliary operations vouchers. D, approval acceptance of donation from Santa Cruz attorney, county attorney. E, renewal of food service contract amendment for Southwest Food Service Excellence LLC for fiscal year 2012-2013. F, approval agreement to provide school meals to Sacred Heart Catholic School. G, approval agreement to provide meals to Mexicayotl Academy. H, approval agreement to provide school meals to Sunshine Christian School. I, renewal and approval of student transportation, transportation contract citizens auto stage fiscal year 2012-2013. J, renewal of contract for pro office solutions for fiscal year 2012-2013. K, approval of Arizona School Risk Retention Trust Incorporated for fiscal year 2012-2013. L, renewal of sole source to Simplex Grinnell Alarm System Provider. M, renewal of sole source for Sage Business Solutions. N, renewal of wide area network to Trillion Partners Incorporated for fiscal year 2012-2013. O, personnel agenda summary. P, addenda for 2011-2012 school year. Q, approval of benefit plans for 2012-2013 school year. R, approval of salary schedules for 2012-2013 school year. Mr. Chair, I would like to separately discuss item I item I and mr. chairman I too would like to discuss item I E as in Edward N as in Nancy O as in Oscar okay. all right chair will entertain a motion to approve consent agenda minus those items so move second any discussion all in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Item E, renewal of food service contract amendment for Southwest Food Service Excellence. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the contract for the renewal of the fifth year, I think it's the last year if I'm not mistaken, uh, that the food service contract this is the fifth year of the five-year contract we passed and adopted as presented and recommended. For a second? Second. Any discussion? The only discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Super <coughs> Superintendent Zimmerman, is uh, I just want to make sure that uh, it's been highlighted that our costs through the Auditor General's uh, report has kind of been out of proportion. If you could just keep up with that and, and let us know as we move through the academic year to make sure that those costs aren't out of proportion consistently through with an Auditor General's report that uh, is just way out of proportion it was, was a big highlight there. And I just want to make sure that our costs are proportionate somewhat. I, I know it's just a measuring stick, but I, this one was a, a highlight of, of that. And I just want to make sure we stay on top of, of that and also the, the free meal so that it doesn't get out of hand for this. I will give you uh, periodical reports on that. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item I, renewal and approval of student transportation contracts, citizens auto stage. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I've renewed this thing the, the 14 years that I've been here and every year I pretty much ask the same basic question and make the same basic comment that uh, 
the bus company, Citizens Auto Stage, is our partner. They have been our provider, uh, and they have done a good job in doing that. Uh, but they have always left us guessing as to what we're paying uh, as far as markup uh, on, on their costs. Um, I think as our partners, so to speak, um, it's not unfair for us to ask for that information. And I ask for it every year um, from the company, but although they seemed willing in the last meeting to come forward with some of that, there was no follow-up. And I just wanted to make a point that we have to, <laughs> we're trapped uh, in one sense. Um, and the other, I don't want to dissuade our, 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 our provider because they've been a good provider, but I'm just disappointed, once again, that they're unwilling to do this. More discussion? Mr. Ron, I'm going to follow up on that. Um, I understand that there was a, a discussion that took place um, and that there was a willingness, and I will, I will follow up on that uh, on behalf of you and the board. But as I have been before, I recognize the need for our students and our system, and I recognize their ability to deliver our need and fulfill our need. That's all, Mr. Chair. Any more discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah. Superintendent Zimmerman, uh, that I'm glad that you held them down to the 2%. Okay, I think that that's, uh, that's good, that because I know they wanted the, the 5%, and they... Uh, you were able to constrict it to our budget limitations there and provide the surface. Uh, the one thing that I would like to ask is whatever happened to that route from Royal Road that goes all the way around that the kids are on the bus for 40 minutes and instead of those kids going to Desert Shadows, I thought that they were gonna go ahead and go to Wade Carpenter so the kids wouldn't be on there so long on the bus. You said that, that something was gonna be done about that. What happened with that? Let me, let me start this and then I'm going to have Fernando come up. Let, let you know that we've been having uh, not only the contractual conversation, but the conversations on the route system. And we have been um, diligently working on that, more so than we ever had before. We're not quite there yet, but we actually had a presentation last week uh, when we had our administrative seminar um, and we actually had citizens come out. We entertained a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. Um, how the uh, we've had some issues that that are going to surface during the fall. And let me give you an example of of one of them. It's hard to determine. Let's say I have bus 23, and there's supposed to be 62 kids on there. In the afternoon, those numbers have been changing. In a lot of ways, we've been um, creating our own problems, and that is that. Uh, we have become sort of like dial-a-ride in the afternoon because parents have issues with babysitting, so maybe they're not going to go home on bus 23. They're going to go home on bus 6. And what that does is that changes the, the balance on what the routes are, so we're going to have to make some decisions as to, you know, what do we want to do with our routes. And what we have seen is that we have been very much uh, parents are willing to drop their kids off because it's on the way to work. But if they get off at 5 and the kids have to uh, go somewhere, we're going to have to start to hold a little f uh, much more firmly on the issue of what, what, how we handle that. We have been looking at all the kids and, and, and where they're currently at, whether it's the Royal Road route or uh, um, and actually a couple more. Um, and, and I can tell you that uh, we actually have the two that did the presentation sitting in the far back. I don't know, Fernando, if you want to take it from there, if you would like to bring them up, but we're certainly moving 200% forward on making our routes effective and efficient. We even talked about bus drivers who tend to want to let a kid on the bus when they probably shouldn't have because, you know, they, they want to bring their, their, their cousins and, and everybody with them. And it really is just almost impossible to maintain the effectiveness and efficiency of the route if we're going to have sort of like that entitlement mentality when it comes to transporting. So if I'll let uh, Fernando take it from there, but I want you to, to, to be assured that we are moving forward on doing whatever it takes. I think that I can 
reiterate the fact that when we've had our meetings that these routes are the same routes we've had for years and we know that the demographics have changed. So with that being said, the routes have to change. So, Fernando. Thank you. Good evening, um, Mr. Arana. We, we will follow up with that and, and I know the importance of it. There's, that was one of our areas that we highlighted that we were going to work with with the bus company and to make sure that, that we have that. So I guess I'm holding myself accountable here to make sure that, that we address that and, and we will be following up with that. We also went back and, and, and had them at our administrative seminar. Uh, we addressed a lot of concerns, issues from the individual sides. Uh, last time I think Dr. Varona had mentioned to, to go individual to the sites and, and ask personnel uh, regarding safety, things that, uh, you know, the time the buses arrive at some schools and, and security, things of, of that nature. And, and those, those questions were answered. Uh, the administrators were able to discuss and to bring up those concerns during the seminar. And I think we have an understanding on that as well. Uh, we will continue to monitor um, those suggestions. So when we start in August, those things are, are cleared up. Um, Mr. Silverman mentioned the, the management plan that we will start in August. All the, the principals have been made aware of that. We will have a list of all the students that are supposed to be on the bus. That means that we will be going with the addresses that are the official addresses and uh, the names of the students so we know exactly who is supposed to be on what bus morning and afternoon. And that is also something that was has been asked, I think, for, for several years about having a, a route management plan in place. Uh, we will assure that that will be in place starting in August as well for the new school year. Uh, that will create a lot of positive things. One is the, the misunderstanding of some buses being overloaded sometimes and some buses being only with a few students. So those things that have come up by having this in place will address those issues and I think it's going to be made clear as to one is the students that are supposed to be on board, the school will know, the bus company will know, and we as a district will have them uh, on our list on the power school as well. So everybody will be communicating and, and understanding as to who should be on the bus and who should not. We also will have, as Mr. Simmer mentioned, for those open enrollment students in the past, uh, some leeway and some um, flexibility has been done with some families and some parents regarding students who go on the bus but should not be boarding the bus. We spoke to the principals on this as well and I think that with this system that will also be be addressed. The most important part is that it will um, it will relate to the safety of our students in case and, and hopefully not but if something does happen that we will have, have the actual count of all those students that are traveling on the bus. And that is the number one priority, I think, that we haven't been able to address because we didn't really have a system in place that connected all of us together with the, with the bus company. Um, I think, Steve, you mentioned the, the rest, but, the, but again, we will be following up on the routes as well, Dr. Varona, and the, the situation there with Meadow Hills. We've had some, some concerns, not on just what you mentioned, but on sometimes the buses using the routes that not all the kids are using, using it in the morning, and then the buses are full in the afternoon. Um, we will be addressing that as well. There's, there's a lot of things that I think we've communicated with the bus company, and, and I think we have some expectations. Um, the communication has definitely improved this year, but now I think it's, it's going to be even better. Rich, I don't know if you want to come up and address some of the things that we're, we're talking about. And uh, lastly, the, the contract was negotiation, negotiated back. Uh, I think they didn't have a problem with that. As once we went back and, and talked, Carla, Ms. Soto, and I met with them. They were very willing and, 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 and willing to assist and to help us. So. Uh, members of the board, Mr. Zimmerman, the only thing that I'll go over real quick is I will make sure that I know Mr. Morgan wanted to get back to you regarding that issue and I know I'll have him do that tomorrow. So if I can get uh, some information from you after the meeting, I'll make sure he calls you. 
Uh, we do have the route management system in place. She's going to start tomorrow interacting with the guy from the school district so we can download all the information. Is there any other questions for us directly? That well, I no. just, uh, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Zimmerman, Mr. Brennan made a comment right now that after the meeting he's going to get the information directly from Mr. Adana. I, I think if there's any negotiations that are going to be done and the concern that Mr. Adana surfaces, it should go through the superintendent of schools and the superintendent should bring it to all of the members. Okay. Let me, let me make a comment on that. I, I appreciate that. But I do remember hearing part of that conversation uh, after the transportation study session, and I believe that the comment that Mr. Morgan made that uh, he, I don't think he's all in favor of full disclosure, but would be willing to sit down with one. I don't know if that's inappropriate, um, but. I, I, I prefer that one be you as well. Okay, so. Um, I don't know where we go with this item. I do know that I heard part of that conversation when, uh, when you were having that dialogue, and and I understand. I understand both. Actually, I understand both both points that are being made. I just have a feeling. I guess we could go back to Mr. Morgan and ask him about the full disclosure. I just don't think, uh, from what I was hearing, that he would be receptive to that. At least at that meeting. I didn't get that. I didn't get that feeling. But I agree with Mr. Uh, Dr. Arona that if it's not full disclosure, if it needs to be one person who can assess some component of fairness on on the markup, that person should be you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll get in touch with him tomorrow. Actually, I wrote myself a note already to call him. So. Okay. Any any other questions, uh, Mr. Please. Chairman? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of renewal and approval of student transportation contract citizens auto stage for fiscal year 2012-2013, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Item N, renewal of wide area network to Trillium Partners Incorporated. Mr. Chairman, uh, I make a motion that the that we approve the 2012 20, 2013 renewal of contract between NUSD and the Trillium Partners Incorporated as recommended. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Zimmerman, uh, I'd just like to know is this, there was concerns when this was originally brought up, is it producing what it said it was going to produce? Are we getting better? reception with the computers and everything like that? I mean, is it working out? Because sometimes when we've had discussion, like on the cell phones, everybody thinks just because we're getting reimbursed from E-rate that, oh, well, we're not paying for it. And I, I think that we should, there should be a sense of accountability. Has there been feedback from the sites that it is working what it was intended to do? Because I've never heard anything. Let, let me start. I've had that concern myself. Oh, good. Um, I can tell you when I first got here and the whole trillion became an issue. Um, uh, the question that came up is, is it going to speed up the amount of, uh, in, in terms of the internet, if it was going to speed up uh, the ability to, to access? And I, from what I've been hearing that there are some sites where it tends to be faster and some sites a little slower and that there has been issues with um, uh, with the amount of um, usage within that system. Um, Alex isn't here, and, and maybe you know a little bit more because technology really isn't my strong suit. I could talk about the finance piece pretty pretty well, but, but I can tell you after having discussion, not probably any time recently, but I can tell you within the past year I had that same conversation, and the answer is it's better, but it is not as good as I thought it was going to be. Honestly, that's the honest answer. So, okay, I'll, I'll just deal with that in another agenda. I'd, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Approved. Item O: Personnel Agenda Summary. 
Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the personnel agenda assignment, uh, su summary as presented and recommended. Second. Second. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Superintendent Zimmerman, on item three, could you please tell me the selection process that was involved in that? Oh, hold on. The classified employee? Yes, yes, sir. Um, that is an item, I think, between Ms. Zuniga and Molly, uh, if you two would like to come up. But this is uh, in case you, you don't have it in front of you. Um, Dr. Alcaraz, that's the issue of your library clerk at A.J. Mitchell. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Zimmerman, members of the audience. Um, the first part of the process would entail that the administrator, when there's a vacant position and when there's something that's authorized and board approved, that they would initiate the request to open the position to advertise it through um, our web-based school stream system. So then HR would post the position and we would get qualified applicants and what we would do is we would send them through to the hiring authority for view and review and then at that point the hiring authority has the authority to go ahead and um, schedule interviews and do you know more of a thorough review of each applicant and then send a recommend to hire notice to HR and for um, a little bit more specifically on how that process happened I'll let Dr. Alcaraz address you on that. So um, to start the process, I reviewed the applicants that Maida and her team sent me, um, looked for applicants that I thought would be a good match for our site, depending on um, what they had included in their resume, their experience. And then I also met with Ms. Villa, um, our, our former, now retired library clerk, and asked her what some of the essential skills would be that she thought would be important um, for that position. Um, but after that process, I interviewed applicants and made my recommendation. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Zimmerman, how many applicants were reviewed? Um, I interviewed three applicants. I probably reviewed, I want to say 12. And some of the applicants had um, put in for the special education aid position. And so um, with two of those applicants, I did a dual interview with them um, for the special ed position. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's the end of consent agenda. Uh, executive session, I see no need to go to executive session. Uh, item nine, governing board future request, Marcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Zimmerman, um, I'd like to request that uh, the insurance, that we not forget about the insurance, that we go out for bid for the insurance. I think that's very important to give us an update on that. And I'd like to also request that uh, Ms. Scott give us an update report on the STEM, on what happened with the governor's office, on her research on that. Okay. None. None here. Um, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. To move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.